My name's Jill Rowe and in this episode of The Different Podcast, I talk with Steve Chalk about why we sometimes struggle to ask for help, opt in to deflect and blame rather than be vulnerable and ask for the help and support we need. From compression socks to the importance of boundaries and knowing ourselves so that we can be honest in our interactions and expectations. This conversation was full of lessons learned, simple stuff discovered in the mess of life and the realisation that asking for help is liberating and life bringing for us and those around us interdependence truly is a virtue and perhaps asking for help is actually a sacred act. So Steve, another episode. Yes, Jill. <laughs> another episode. <laughs> so, you're always brilliant because you always have so these great subjects to talk about. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about now? Then? We're going to talk Today. about power of asking for help. There's a lot better than that. <laughs> yeah. That's a biggie, isn't it? Are you good at it? Um, I think I've got better at it. I'm not there yet, but I think I've got better at it. A friend of ours, Joy, used mm. to be my line manager in Oasis. And um, I remember quite often, uh, you know, I'd sit in meetings with Joy and I'd be like, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed with my work, you know, because there's always a lot going mm. on. And Joy was very good. She just used to say to me, so what do you need? What is it you need? And what I noticed, I noticed this rather ugly trait of mine, which was not to be able to say what I needed. Hmm. Didn't seem to be able to say what I needed. What I did instead Did you was, know what you needed and you couldn't say it, couldn't get it out, or did you just not know? I think it was easier to move to resentment rather than All right. <laughs> saying, like, so right. it's much easier... I think, to deflect and blame. Right. So the fact that there was too much work was because someone wasn't doing what they uh, should do yeah. or they, if only they were like this Pulled or only weight. they should be, yeah, and all of that. So it, like it, it would come across in that kind of resentful, mm. slightly bitter kind mm. of a way. But Joy would always ask, but what do you need? And I gradually realised <laughs> that there was an answer to her question, which was I needed I needed to ask for help and that help needed to be in a particular form and another person who could help with help with work. And I think um, you just realise that for some of us, asking for help is can be a struggle. Like we don't, mm. for some reason, we don't want to reach out with that vulnerability of saying, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I used to say very often, it was one of those things I used to say when I was speaking at weddings and speaking about families because a wedding yeah. is about is about two families supporting one another. It's all it's it's yeah. it's wider than the individuals. And I used to often say, the tree needs the soil, mm. the soil needs the rain, the rain needs the clouds. It's dependent on the clouds. The clouds are dependent on the air. The cloud needs the air is this strange thing. The air needs the tree. Yeah. So there's this cycle. Yeah. You know, the tree needs the soil, the soil needs the rain, etc. But it comes back to the air needs the tree. So there's a cycle of life. We need one another and uh, we need one another's help all the time. It's very hard, though, isn't it, sometimes to ask for help for all sorts of reasons. Mm. I think often I don't ask for help because I don't want to overburden anyone else. Mm. In, in the end, you kind of think, well, I'd rather slog through it myself than, than kind of load this extra burden on someone else. I don't know how you get out of that. Yeah, I think, so part of it is, so you asked me to do something, mm. help you with something just recently. And, and I know that whenever, the force of your personality, Steve, mm. yeah. <laughs> It can mean that I could very easily just say yes, 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 mm. yes to you and you're my friend and, mm -hmm. you know. But I also know that you you care about me mm. and so what you just said I know is true. Mm. You know, you don't you don't want to overburden people. Mm. 
But there's a responsibility on me to know myself yeah, well, yeah. isn't there? And for me to have boundaries which are healthy, yeah. which say, which gives me the ability to say, hmm. yes, Steve, I can do that for you. Yeah. Or, Steve, I can do that, but I'll have to do it next week. Yeah. Or, actually, Steve, I can't do that, but is there another hmm. solution we can find? And I know exactly what you're talking about, and you did do it, and you got me out a very big <laughs> hole by doing it. And, and it's the, been fun, yeah, very, actually, and we've all grown. Yeah, through. very good res, very good results, so thank you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, no, really, absolute thank you. Pleasure. But no, I did worry about asking you because... Hmm. Well, I mean, the truth is, you know, being honest about it, I know because I began Oasis 40 years ago now, mm -hmm. and I know that, I know the hardship and the slog of starting something. You know, often people come to me, often now, yeah. and when I say often, I mean often, you see, because they're all coming to ask for help. You know, yeah. I suppose it's a function of getting older, I don't know, <laughs> but people come and say, and anyway, so I always feel that I should listen to people, to yeah. say, if I can. And so anyway, a typical thing happens dozens of times in mm. the course of a year. People come and say, well, how do you start a, a charity? Mm. Mm. And I always take a big pause and I say in a stern voice looking at them without smiling don't <laughs> and then I let it sink in because I know it depressed them when they expected me to be motivating yeah. or something and then I say don't unless you really have to but if you really have to recognize this it's going to strip you of time you know mm -hmm. give up everything else you'll be absorbed in this and that's been my experience mm. somebody once said that the vision that it takes to start an enterprise mm. like oasis a charity or whatever is it's an incurable disease yeah. you can't do <laughs> anything about disease. it yes so i don't want to so i find it sometimes when people say why don't you ask for help i just don't want to burden people because mm. i know that they're you know they got a lot going on in their lives so how do you how do you get around that then, Jill? How do you get? <laughs> it, I don't think I've got the habit of not asking for help, except when I think, ooh. But I but I I do like I said, you know, in the example of you asking me just recently, I think I think it's beholden on all of us to be honest with one another, isn't it? And say you should ask. We mm. should always ask each other mm. for help, but we should also be able to say yes and we should also be able to say no if that's the reality for us mm. at that time or how about we do that together or mm. you know I think it's a you know so but I you know and also Steve you're the founder and it's the you know the founder situation isn't yeah, it you are I oh, know you got to live with your own yeah inadequacies <laughs> <laughs> you? I wasn't going to say that that's no, not what true. I meant I just think mm. it's it's part of it's part of you being you and mm. being the founder of this amazing mm. movement that we're a part of. But I think there is a some. I'm really interested in why it is that sometimes we struggle to ask for help, and mm. I think there's something in there sometimes about that we're afraid of being that asking for help is a weakness, even, mm. and that people are going to judge us. Yeah, and I'm like, where does that come from? Yeah. That notion of being judged by others. Yeah. Or this this sense in our society, which has really grown, hasn't it? This kind of bizarre development in the tide of history where where we've come to believe that being self-reliant yeah. is is a real virtue. Yeah. When in actual fact, we're completely dependent on mm. others. I, I think, um, in fact, we had a, a new little grandson born mm. about a month and yeah. a bit ago. His name's yeah. Kit. And... Uh, you know, you watch a tiny infant again mm. and you realise he is absolutely dependent mm. on others for everything. Yeah. And in actual fact, his very existence yeah. is an is about community and an act of community, isn't it? Yeah. We are yeah. we are born because of others. Yeah. And then what we do is we slowly emerge and we emerge into this place where we think we know it all. You watch, you watch, yeah, yeah. you know, we grow into this place of of independence. But as we get older again, we realise that we are truly dependent on others. Yeah. And in our first days and our last days, mm. it's not just interdependence, it's total dependence yeah, on others, isn't it? Yeah. So that's who yeah. we are. But the middle bit, we find, in the yeah. middle, we find it more difficult really than difficult. at either end. 
I think there's another thing in there, isn't there, about where for some of us not asking for help is a good way to maintain distance. Mm. So to not mm. not build that sense of connectedness to others. Actually, the, the not asking for help, it can, can be a, a bit of armour that we use mm. to keep our separation from others, to keep our self-reliance, doesn't mm. it? You know? Yeah. And and pride in um, well here's here's the truth. When I was in my twenties, and um, at the beginning of Oasis, I've got a friend. Um, he's still my friend, and after all these years, and he was set in upper something as well. Mm. And I said to him one day, "I'm going to call this thing Oasis," mm. and he said, "Why don't you call it Steve Chalk Foundation?" <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> and I said. Because I knew then, you know, that that was a wrong, that was yeah. wrong for me. Yeah. He set up something which was named after him, see. Yeah. And um, the thing is, even that it's a struggle, it's a struggle for yeah. me, do you know, because you do think, I can do that better than they can, <laughs> don't you? And yeah. I, if I do that, I'll do it first time better and yeah, all that yeah. kind of that. So you yeah. have to overcome all of that, yeah. don't you? But you know that. You know that in your in your best moments, you know that investing in other people, mm. and and giving away mm. responsibility and saying mm. you do that, you lead that, you go that mm. it's it's a great thing because something grows. Yeah. Um, when I'm when I'm at my best moment, I know this now. Do you know that it, whether I live or die today or tomorrow or an oasis is a team isn't it it's mm. a wonderful yeah. team of people who are leaning on one another yeah. and supportive of one another and the expertise is never in one person it's mm. always in a group Absolutely. isn't it it's always there's always someone who yeah. knows more about everything than you do yeah. and all that yeah. that kind of thing but 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 it's, it's still a struggle sometimes to ask for help mm. and put someone else before you know yeah. i've struggled with all those things yeah, yeah. So, so you know the way to go is hard to go it, that way sometimes. It really is. And sometimes I think what happens is that life throws you a lemon. So like for me, just, you know, so we're recording this and we referenced it in an, another podcast when I was very ill at the start of this year. You know, my, my levels of uh, competence and self-reliance are quite high, do you know? And then I got ill and I had to ask. I actually, it wasn't just it would be a nice or it's a smart idea or it's the kind of thing you read in a book. It was like, actually, I I have to ask mm. for help. And I found that one of the most freeing things for mm. me, but also one of the things that helped me to be changed and transformed again as a, as a person. You know, it's it mm. didn't come naturally. Mm. Not been ill before, mm. and then suddenly you find yourself in a circumstance mm. where you know I had yeah. to I had to wear these <laughs> these when I came out of hospital I had to wear these compression sock uh. stockings, but because I'd had abdominal surgery I <laughs> couldn't actually <laughs> they you know so they were you have to do you have to wear these stockings and you have to put <laughs> them on and I'm like but you can't actually. <laughs> Like, as a single person, you can't get them so, on. So my whole day, mm. every day, was planned around what time mm. someone else could come and visit so that I could ask them to, to put, put my stockings on. And that, like, n I've never, the, the last time in my life where I was that dependent was when I was a baby. Yeah. And, and what that taught me and actually freed me from, mm. you know, and opened up relationships with yeah. people in an, in the next level of life. Do you know, yeah. it was just, I mean, good on them as well yeah. <laughs> for coming to, to come and help me yeah. with that stuff. And good on you for, because there's an embarrassment about it <laughs> yeah. and all the rest of it, yeah. isn't there? But there was nothing I could do about it yeah. except ask. Yeah. That's the only way I could. So part of my healing was this interdependence. Yeah. And I suppose you learn something in that situation, yeah. don't you? That equips you, not yeah. just for that moment, but for all sorts of things in the future. Absolutely. I've always been fascinated. You'll, you'll, I'm sure there's some profound theology in this that you'll be able to share, but I've always been fascinated by that story where 
you know, the woman at the well and Jesus asks her, like he approaches her for help, really, yeah. doesn't Ask he? Ask for a drink. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's such a, that is a revolution, yeah. isn't it? That whole yeah. dynamic between yeah. what's going on in that story. Yeah. The very fact that um, he's a Jew and she's a Samaritan and he asks her for a drink. You see a Jewish man asking a Samaritan yeah. woman for a drink is uh, like, that doesn't happen. Yeah. You're crossing an ethnic divide. And, yeah. and then, you know, men are greater than, than yeah. women and, in, you know, all that kind of thing. So Jesus is in that statement deliberately mm. raising someone up yeah. and taking someone yeah. Seriously, who yeah. who wouldn't have otherwise? It's it's and it a was all done by subverting act. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it makes me think when it, we're you know we live in a world that at the moment feels like it's leaning towards division, mm. and you just think, but what if we asked each other for help? Yes, what would be different? Indeed, you build community. Yeah. Um, I was talking to somebody who works within Oasis today and we were talking about a particular project in a particular town mm. where he's working and we, we need to raise a, a, a sum of money there. Not surprising, <laughs> isn't we need to do it everywhere. And in this case, it's £50,000 yeah. for this particular project, which is a brilliant project. And um, and the project's based in a, a park. Mm. It's, it's actually about building a, a an all-weather football football sports mm. pitch not just football and it costs a lot more than that but mm. we need to contribute that much money and he was talking about going out for funding bids etc which yeah. is a really good idea and then i said to him but why don't you um get the local people and organize um a sponsored walk around the park and how many laps can you do mm. or sponsored push around the park yeah. or whatever do you know that that kind of thing and I said to him, I said, it won't raise £50,000, but what it does is it takes all the people who looked in on this project and said, oh, yeah. they are doing that yeah. over there, and you've invited them in, and then they say, we are doing yeah. this, we are creating yeah. this all-weather sports pitch. And once they say we, they grow in stature, it becomes owned by them. They end up looking after it and speaking well of it. Yeah. And... We gain all of that by asking yeah. for help, don't we? We yeah. gain deep friendships and we gain relationship. We build trust and do all of those things. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's seeing the moments yeah. and the opportunities when we can do that. Because if you're not careful, if you're anything like me, you can ignore them. Yeah. Not so even see them. You don't yeah. know yet that you've not ignored yeah. them. It's one thing when you say, no, I'm not going to ask for help because I can do it myself. Yeah. It's a whole new level when you don't even see that there's yeah. an opportunity to ask for help. And if we if we took seriously, if we genuinely took seriously, that that very act of asking someone for help was a mechanism through which we were building community, we were creating belonging, we were being freed, our we were mm. growing as human beings. Mm. It, it's. It's like so subver subversive and yet so simple. Isn't yes. It? And yeah, learn so much from it. You know that thing we did the other day, actually. I, in fact, I should explain that. I, I said to you, you know, a yeah. few weeks ago, I've got this idea, but I've never done anything about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you said, Oh, I'm doing a talk. Can you come and help? There yeah. you are. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was this, this thing we did. And I think it was really quite, it was quite interesting. It was, it was just that. I, I, I asked everyone there, because mm. myself, so I'm not asking them to do mm. something that I don't think about. I said, I said, think about yourself and think about whether this is your last day mm. on planet Earth yep. and all that you've learned. And now we gave everybody a sheet of paper and a yep. pen and promised them nobody would ever see this yep. again except them. I said, now take some time, take 10 minutes, and write to yourself when you were young, mm. on your last day, yeah. perhaps on earth, with all your wisdom, write a letter back through time to yourself on your first day. Mm. What, what gift would you give to the very young you? Mm. And it was, it, it was an yeah. incredible thing, isn't it? Because yeah. everybody 
get into what would I say? What have I learned about life yeah. that I'd want to say to me? And people took it very seriously. And I think because, you know, I get, go being through that process oh. myself, I keep thinking of new things I'd like to say <laughs> to my young self. But the big thing, one of the big things is don't try to go it alone. Mm -hmm. Lean on other people. Be part of a team. Don't think about what can I do with my life? Think about what can we do together and what I can bring to us as a team and how this thing about passing on the baton yeah. that I've talked about before, how I hand to people the opportunity. Yeah. I'm, in my life, extraordinarily grateful to people that ask me for help. Mm. When I look back on some of it, I realise, you know, when I was a teenager, for instance, I can think of, I was taught to play the guitar by yep. a youth worker, and uh, then a, a, and he asked me to be in a band. It was called Manor, and uh, I played the bass guitar yeah. in this band, and he, he taught me to play the bass guitar, this guy called Steve. And so there were four of us in this band, and uh, we used to go and perform to youth groups and mm. things and take youth weekends and things like that. And I was only like... 15 and mm. and 16 perhaps yeah and then um, and he'd say to me steve you know i think that you shouldn't just play the bass why why don't you link the songs together mm. why don't you stand up and 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 yeah. talk to people about why we're here and that and and I used to be in 15 or 16 mm. used to think well he's a bit old i mean he was <laughs> he was in his 23, 24, you know. <laughs> I used to think, well, he's a bit old, he's a bit past it. No wonder he wants me to communicate with these teenagers <laughs> because he recognises that I've got what it takes, whereas he's, you He's know, past it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's long, long gone. And it took me years, actually, because I was so wrapped up in myself, <laughs> to realise what a gift he gave me yeah. because his powers of communication were far superior to mm. mine. So whereas I thought he was saying, I need some help, mm. what he was actually doing in saying I need some help was giving me an opportunity, opportunity. yeah, which allowed me to develop a skill, a gift yeah. that I would have never had otherwise. Yeah. So, yeah, asking for help empowers another person, yeah. not just relieves your load. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it changes your, yeah. Yes, it impacts your well being. And yes, and yes, but it diminishes exclusion. It, you know, yeah. it, it does all the good stuff. The power of asking for help. With and, my grandchildren, I got yeah. 10 of those now. <laughs> you know, I sometimes, I'll ask the older ones for help in all sorts of ways. Mm. You know, I, I, I say, uh, you know, uh, I, I uh, some time ago, Ask them to help uh, wash my car. You know? <laughs> as long as they didn't use a scourer. <laughs> it was the kind of like. Uh, but it was fantastic because they. Yeah, they, they love to help. They, uh, yeah. And yeah. they. So they go. Actually, it would have been a lot quicker to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, they step up. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? If we got the gift of being able to empower another person. Mm empower another person i would have said about myself one of the big things i've learned you know in not calling oasis the steve chalk, chalk foundation yeah. i was naive then but i kind of got it but i would i think today i realize it it was beyond my wisdom but what a good choice it was mm. to to somehow in my naivety understand that you've got to create something that exists without you and you slowly become redundant to because everybody else yeah. takes off and gets yeah. much further than you can and uh, on a just like expanding it right out i always feel like god the divine the universe however you want to describe that invites us to help like hmm. for us to join in in the, the, you know, we're invited mm. to help, aren't we? We're yeah. invited to participate. Which is, yeah, which leads me uh, back into 
as we finish, I often say to people about the Oasis logo, yeah. the, the circle of inclusion, the messy yeah. circle, as we call it, you know, our badge, that for me it's a symbol, uh, oh. a, it's a Christian symbol, it's a symbol of my faith, that God is a community, yeah. do you see? God, even, even God is a community, yeah. Father, Son and Spirit. Yeah. God is a community and a community of reliance on one yeah. another yeah. and not a community of sameness. So a father, a son, and a spirit. Yeah. So so strength is yeah. that that in the messy circle is the many strandedness, yeah. isn't it? Strength is when we rely on one another. It's when we ask one another for help. And even God yeah. is a community. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. Maybe it's true that asking for help is actually a sacred act. I think it is.